Daniel Schilling was a 46-year-old carpenter from the small Turnigan Arm community, Alaska. In July 2020, he went off into the Kenai Mountains to clear and construct a primitive trail through the wooded mountainside. He never returned. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the terrifying bear attack on Daniel Schilling. Welcome to Final Affliction. With the exception of his dog, Daniel worked alone. The rough, rugged terrain of the Alaskan mountains were his perfect office. He used his cabin in Turnigan as a base and set off on foot from it each day to work on the trail. The cabin was a couple of miles from a paved road that connected the community of Hope to the Seward Highway. The picturesque spot was about 25 miles southeast of Anchorage. On July 29, 2020, Daniel awoke early. He looked out through his cabin's window. He could see that he was blessed with clear blue skies for the day. He dressed in his gear, putting on his sturdy boots and clipping his bear spray canister onto his belt. It is believed he also placed his handgun in his backpack. During his construction work, he preferred to keep bear spray on him rather than a firearm. A shotgun or rifle weighed him down and got in the way. Daniel didn't plan on being out for long and decided he would return to the cabin for lunch later in the day. He picked up his water bottle and after a quick breakfast, he whistled to his dog and stepped outside. The two of them set off towards the path he was constructing. It was less than a mile from the cabin. Sawing down saplings and lopping off branches, Daniel gradually inched along the route he was carving through the great Alaskan wilderness. His dog carelessly sniffed around the surrounding trees and wandered through the clearing as Daniel worked. As midday loomed, the dense foliage sheltered Daniel from the growing heat of the rising sun. It was tiring work and he paused for a breather, wiping the sweat from his brow and taking a sip from his water bottle, when suddenly a brown bear came crashing through the undergrowth. Daniel barely had time to react. He fumbled for the bear spray, pointing it directly at the charging grizzly. He emptied the entire contents of the canister before the bear flattened him to the floor. Daniel struggled to breathe. The full force of the bear had knocked the wind from his lungs and now it stood pushing down on him. Its giant paws pressed firmly on his chest. Daniel kicked and thrashed about, trying desperately to hit the bear. He smacked the bear again and again on the snout, but this only enraged the bear more. It let out a deep guttural growl and opened its jaws. Daniel could see saliva dripping from its jowls as it lowered its head menacingly. Ferociously, it bit into Daniel's face. He let out a yell as a tooth hit bone. Again, the bear bit down and scraped its claws over Daniel's chest. The attack that ensued was likely brutal and ferocious, but no one knows quite what happened to Daniel. His tragic death was both a shock to those who knew him and a mystery to others. His dog found its way home, and when Daniel's wife saw the dog arrive home without Daniel, she hurriedly called his friends. None of them had seen him. Working within such dense vegetation, it is likely that Daniel didn't see the bear until it was right upon him. If he did have his handgun in his backpack like his friends said he did, then there definitely wouldn't have been enough time to use it. Maybe it was his dog that alerted him to the bear, maybe Daniel had time to retreat a little, maybe the dog provoked the attack, no one quite knows. After Daniel's wife called his friends raising the alarm, they went to check on him. They assumed that he may have fallen and sprained an ankle or broken a leg. Walking past his cabin, they followed the path that Daniel had carved through the undergrowth. Little more than a mile along the path, his friends stopped in their tracks. They had found Daniel's body on the ground, bloodied and lifeless. His injuries were consistent with a brown bear attack. In those desperately sad and heart-stopping moments, they called the local police department to report the terrible news. Daniel's wife and friends were in utter disbelief that he was gone. He was such an experienced outdoorsman. They knew his knowledge and hunting expertise had served him well throughout the years, but now their worlds came crashing down. State wildlife biologists arrived on the scene. The stench of pepper spray was still in the air. The empty canister was found about 15 feet from Daniel's body. A thorough scout of the area found nothing that would have attracted a bear, such as a moose carcass or other food sources. Daniel had been working relatively close to Six Mile Creek, a salmon spawning stream, but officials didn't consider it close enough to the attack site for Daniel to be considered prey. The puzzling evidence found by field experts was that both black bear and brown bear DNA were found on Daniel's body. 
It is usual for these bears to tolerate each other and often black bears give the larger grizzlies a wide berth. However, with evidence of both bears present at the attack site, some locals considered them to have attacked Daniel together, a form of teamwork amongst bears. This however is highly unlikely. Bears are largely solitary animals. They do not hunt in pairs or groups and subspecies never socially mix with one another. In fact, brown bears have been known to kill black bears. So what exactly did happen to Daniel? The most likely explanation is that he unknowingly disturbed a large female brown bear which attacked him. She wasn't necessarily preying on him but had been startled and had felt threatened. She was eliminating this threat from her territory by attacking the intruder. Uninterested in eating him, she left the kill site. If bears cannot eat their prey then and there, they often cover it up, hiding it from other predators and scavengers in order to return to it later. There was no evidence of Daniel's body being partially buried or hidden with dirt or foliage. Bear spray may sting the eyes and nose when in direct contact, but it can also attract bears. In this case, a black bear was probably attracted either by the smell of the spray or by the fresh kill and made its way to Daniel's body. This would explain the presence of both bear subspecies at the site. But why was the bear spray ineffective during the initial attack? The Regional Wildlife Supervisor for the Alaskan Department of Fish and Game, who was tasked with investigating Daniel's death, suspected the bear spray was faulty. The spray is sold by Costco stores in Anchorage and is manufactured by a company called UDAP. There had been concerns that some cans manufactured between March and August of that year could have been defective. There is also strong criticism over the effectiveness of bear spray, particularly regarding wind direction which could result in the spray being blown away from the target. A flyby of the area where Daniel had been killed the following day found two black bears and one brown bear within several miles of Daniel's location. It's probable that many other bears were also in close proximity, but these were not spotted by officials. The DNA evidence collected from swabs of Daniel's body and clothing pointed towards two female bears. A week after the attack, wildlife biologists shot and killed three female black bears and one female grizzly. DNA from one of the black bears matched that found at the kill site. DNA from that brown bear did not. Following a bear attack, there is always some debate about the use of pepper spray. Some swear by it, others say it is foolish to go into bear territory without a high caliber firearm. Although rangers and wildlife experts always recommend the use of bear spray over a firearm, research has shown that bear spray can actually be an attractant for some bears. Scientists studying bears in Alaska's Katmai National Park in the 1990s found that the majority of the bears they observed actually rolled and wriggled around in spray the researchers had sprayed onto the ground. They were vigorously scent rubbing their entire bodies in the spray residue. Sprayed directly from a can, however, results in the stinging of the eyes and nose and this is thought to deter an approaching bear. The cause of Daniel's attack remains a mystery. It is still not known whether the attack was defensive or predatory. What has been determined, however, is that he was killed by a female brown bear who are notorious for mauling anyone who stands between her and her cubs, often leading to the unfortunate victim's final affliction.